Today we're going to be working on some swimming and some jumping while we're swimming. Let, let me just show you exactly what we're going to be working on. We're going to be changing our test area to include a little slot here that's essentially going to serve as a sort of simulated waterfall. There's no actual waterfall, there's no actual movement in the water, no currents or anything like that, but uh, we're going to be able to essentially swim sideways out of this thing and fall normally. We're going to be creating a little pool down here so that we can solve an issue that I mentioned in, in last week's comments. Uh, we're also going to be uh, making some changes to our swimming that were sort of oversights. So let me just show you what that means. The first most obvious thing is our character is not going to slow down when he runs into the water. Uh, I don't know why I thought this would be a good idea, but I guess overall, like, we all learned something and it wasn't necessarily wrong, but it's not something that the WoW character controller does. So we're going to be able to run at full speed in the water and then as soon as we reach a certain height, we're going to start swimming. The next thing is we're going to be adjusting it so that we can actually swim downwards, which is something that was brought to my attention that um, essentially we can swim downwards by pressing the sit key. And the sit key is not something that we needed, which is why I don't think I added it. And of course, we can jump out of the water. Now, if we wanted to, we can essentially jump out of the water onto this ledge and apparently double jump. We can also just come over here to this little slot here, like I mentioned before, and we can just fall right out of the water and land in this pool. So yeah, that's basically gonna be everything. Let's uh, dive right into it. I'm gonna start by making some changes to our scene. Um, some of these changes are like things that you already know, so I'm just going to kind of fast forward through them so that you can watch what I'm doing, but I'm not really going to be explaining a little bit too much. Essentially, I just wanted to make a, a little bit of a, like a little slot here that we can sort of put like an imaginary waterfall. There's not going to actually be a, a, a waterfall there, but what we're going to be doing with it is just uh, making sure that we can code a way for our player to essentially fall out of the water. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the water and drag it over just slightly. And then I just brought the base up by one so that we can extend the floor a bit. So let's just grab the floor here and extend that out quite a bit. It's like there, I suppose, right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on uh, creating new geometry for us to edit with. So I'm going to insert an edge loop here. And I'm going to shift it over until it meets up with right about here. Or, no, maybe I'll do like a, about a meter in from there. Next, I'm going to select this edge here, insert another edge loop, and then this edge here, and insert another edge loop. And from here, I'm going to adjust this edge loop to line up with our slot on, here, on this side. And I'm going to grab the bottom and the top of this edge loop. Uh, so that we can adjust it to line up with this here. I'm actually not going to worry too much about what's on this side because we're going to be merging that geometry away later anyways. It looks like this isn't quite lined up the way I need it to be. So that's good. And then we'll create two new edge loops here. So we'll insert an edge loop and I'm going to be bringing this one probably about a meter away from the wall here. And then let's insert another edge loop and this one uh, I'll just line it up with something and we'll sort of figure the rest out later for that one. Then I'm going to come down here to the bottom and I'm actually just going to widen this bottom bit here by about one meter. Then I'm going to go to face select mode, grab the top here, grab the bottom here and holding shift I'm just going to bring this down. You can let go of shift and it'll essentially let you sort of slide it up and down. But I'm going to lock it here to about a meter and uh, you know what maybe I'll just bring that down a little bit further so holding control just bring it down three meters about and then from there I'm gonna grab edge select again grab this top edge on the upper side and then I'm gonna bring that way out to about there that should be fine okay so the next thing we need to do is we need to take let's just hide everything so that we can we can work and see what we're doing I'm going to go into vertex selection mode and this is where I'm going to start by, uh, I'm going to start simplifying a lot of my geometry because there's a lot of stuff here that we just don't need, really. I'll start by selecting a corner. I'm also going to hide the widget just so we can see what we're selecting. And then I'm going to select maybe a couple around here. And then I'll go to Collapse Vertices 
hit the plus key and make sure collapse to first is selected. From there you can either hit collapse vertices or just hit the button here. And that'll collapse all the vertices to wherever you selected. Looks like I also missed one over here so let's collapse that one down. So you can see what this is doing is it's just simplifying everything that's that's around so that we don't have any stray extra vertices that we don't need. And this is just a really good way of sort of managing how much geometry you're using. Keep in mind also that this isn't always necessary. There might be instances where you actually want extra geometry, but uh, in this particular case I just want to get rid of everything that I'm not using because it's just wasting resources. And from there I can close this and turn everything back on, turn on the body of water, and then I want to switch this from a box collider to a mesh collider. And then from there I'm just gonna extrude these walls out. And duplicate this wall. And that's everything. So with that done we can close Pro Builder save our scene. It's gonna take a little bit of time to sort of update everything so just give it a second. But from there um, we can actually start on what we need to do. So let's open up the player controller script and let's start by solving a couple problems with uh, the script. Some things that were careless mistakes that were things that I should have sort of realized I was doing um, and other things that were just kind of like over things that I overlooked. So let's Let's, let's start with uh, how we use our jump key binding, the space bar, to swim. Uh, and that's over here, it's velocity plus equals transform up. And essentially what I want to do here is I want to change this. Now the reason why we're changing this is because it was demonstrated to me by a couple different people that you can actually use the sit key to swim downwards. So let's go to our control script and let's right next to jump, let's just add sit and then Let's go to our character controller over here and I'll just add a primary sit and that's just going to be X and then I'm just going to hit apply to prefab. So from there we can take our velocity, let's just get rid of this and then we're going to go velocity dot Y plus equals axis and then the first one will be jump, the second one will be controls dot sit dot get control binding. And what this will allow us to do is it will allow us to basically be able to swim up with the spacebar and swim down with the X key. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to solve an issue that is down here and get water level. Essentially, I'm going to try and illustrate this by creating a new body of water down here. I'm just going to copy this. So copy the water body here. We'll bring it down to the zero level on the Y axis. Then I'm just going to shift this over and bring this down by like 0.5 maybe even bring it over a little bit and we can just start by deleting okay we'll delete water one two three and five unless you have something different just all the water that isn't you know intersecting with this little pool area okay so we have water body one and water body there and so the thing that I can demonstrate here is that if we jump into our water body you know we can swim around no problem it's just not an issue but when we go to swim in this body of water, nothing happens. I think the reason why this is is because of the way this is set up. So you can see that it's going between float dot minimum value, which is a negative number, and water surface. So essentially, since our distance from water surface is always positive, this, this is never actually a possibility, which means we're never actually going to be able to swim in the water. So what we need to do is we need to change this from zero to float dot max value and in all honesty we may not even need this at all so you could just comment this out if you want or just completely get rid of it and that should actually be fine and now let's test out our swimming again and as you can see we can swim in the water now now there is one more thing as it turns out when you run into the water in world of warcraft you don't actually slow down so if you want to change the speed you know how uh, I'm just going to comment it out for my own sake. So I'm going to come up to locomotion uh, into in water where we're changing the current speed here. And I'm just going to go control K C and that's just going to comment everything out. So that way we're just going to 
be able to run right into the water at uh, our max speed and then go right into swimming. And the final thing is this little hop that our character does before actually jumping into the water. What I believe is going on there is our collider is actually interacting with this even though it shouldn't be. So the way we're going to need to do this is we're basically going to need to create a, a layer mask. So let's go to the top here and I think right above Moose we'll go public layer mask and we'll call this one ground mask. And this is just going to hold our environment essentially. Nothing environment. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to find all of our raycasts. So here, right at the end of it, we're going to go comma ground mask. So let's just, I'm just going to quickly search for physics.raycasts. So here's one, and here's one down here, comma ground mask. And that should prevent our character from hopping into the water. All right, so the next thing that we have to do is we need to reveal the jumping boolean here. So I'm just going to go serialize field so that we can actually start working on jumping out of the water and that kind of thing. Let's have a look at what it's doing when we run into the water or when we jump into the water. So we'll start by jumping. So you can see jumping is on until we touch the ground. And then when we jump into the water, we're actually still jumping. So the reason why this is a problem is because if we want to be able to jump out of the water, we need to be able to turn that on and off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to locomotion where we're in water. I'm basically just going to create a little thing around here, uh, right above move state. If jumping, then jumping is equal to false. This way we can ensure that jumping is set to false as soon as we hit the water. Then what we need to do to ensure that we can essentially fall sideways or whatever cases downwards out of a out of a body of water is we need to basically set up a situation in our swimming where we're going to say if not in water and not jumping because when we're jumping we're technically not in water. Then the first thing we're going to do is set velocity y equal to zero so that we can pick up speed as we jump out of the water. Then velocity is going to be equal to new vector three velocity dot x velocity y the variable and velocity dot z. Then our jump direction is going to be equal to velocity. Our jump speed is going to be equal to swim speed divided by two. We're going to set jumping equal to true and we are going to set our move state equal to move state dot locomotion and this is basically going to help us make sure that when we move sideways out of the water like if we're going out of a waterfall we essentially fall out of the water at this point we actually need to make sure that we're separating our velocity out into two different variables with here with our applying our inputs we are setting up jumping as well as velocity. Um, and I believe because of this raycast here, we need to take all of this all the way up to velocity. We need to copy this. And then I'm going to say if not jumping, then we're going to do all the stuff that we normally do. Else we're going to jump. Now from here, we have a couple things. So first of all, we have this show ground ray that's only going to show up if we're not jumping. But we want to show we want it to show up all the time. So we need to take this and we can just put it directly under our ground ray uh, origin and direction. Um, in addition to that, we need to actually make sure that we jump. So we're going to say if not jumping and jump and our distance from water surface is less than or equal to swim level, then we will jump. And we've already, we've already set this up, so we know that this is going to actually allow our character to jump. So now we just need to make sure that when our character is jumping some stuff happens in this else and so from here a lot of it's the same stuff that we've already done we're going to go if velocity y is greater than terminal velocity then velocity y plus equals gravity times time dot delta time so that's us picking up speed then we need to do velocity is equal to jump direction times jump speed plus vector 3 dot up times velocity y. 
And this is basically just us applying this to our velocity. Then we need to move our controller. So controller.move, and then inside the brackets, velocity times time dot delta time. And finally, we just need to do a physics.raycast, which is essentially just going to be this. We'll just do this. And then the last thing that we have to do in order to make sure that we are actually resetting the, the jump is we need to say if distance from water surface is greater than swim level, then jumping is equal to false. All right, so now let's actually see this in action. So here we are swimming in water and there we have it. Our guy can jump out of the water. He can jump pretty far, it seems. So from here, we actually just need to tweak the uh, jumping, essentially. What I think we need to do is we need to make sure that our jumping is happening in a way where we are jumping a shorter distance, but also higher. So this way we can jump out of the water if we want to onto like some kind of a dock or something. So let's open up our jump method. And I think we will start by creating a switch statement. So switch and we'll use move state. Then we'll go case move state dot locomotion. Break that. Then I'll just copy this and we'll change locomotion to swimming. Then from here, I'm just going to take all of this and we will move this. Uh, okay, we'll take these two actually. And we'll move this into locomotion. Not going to change that at all. I'm going to delete this as well. And I'm going to move this into swimming as well. And from here, we're going to make a couple changes. We're going to change the current speed to swim speed. Then we're going to multiply jump height by 1.25f. And that should give us the numbers that we're looking for. So now if you watch us actually swim or jump, you can see that we are jumping higher and we are also jumping a shorter distance. So if I want to, I can just jump out of the water onto this little dock area over here. And just as a final touch, I'm actually going to do something that I've been meaning to do for a very long time, but I just keep forgetting. I'm going to go into the controls, go into auto run, into secondary, make the size one. I'm going to go down to mouse, and I think mouse three is the one that I need to do. Perfect. Okay, so let's just copy component real quick, and then let's paste component values. I'll just revert these two apply ground mask and we'll apply auto run and that should be everything honestly from there you can use the third mouse button to run your character forward to, to do auto run which is i believe the default setting in world of warcraft i'm gonna have to check uh, i usually just use this one to auto run i don't know if i'm setting it up manually i don't think i ever do but i'll have to double check that but either way if you have a third mouse button it's super useful to just be able to just auto run by clicking a button on your mouse. All right, so that was swimming. I hope you uh, learned a lot today and I'm glad we got this one done. A couple updates in terms of the streams. Uh, as I'm sure you're probably aware, even though I haven't said anything about this, I'm playing a lot of classic World of Warcraft, which means I have both mistimed and forgotten streams. Uh, so I'll probably be trying to stream more, but uh, I think the schedule is going to change quite a bit. Things are kind of just crazy right now, and I'm not exactly able to dedicate as much time to streaming as I want to. If you don't see me this week on stream, you'll know that it's either because I'm working or because I'm playing World of Warcraft. I know, I know, I gotta get my priorities straight. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully soon I'll be able to start uh, streaming more full-time again. We'll do some good solid three hour streams where I guess I just kind of like work on stuff and you guys hang out. So yeah, uh, again, thanks for watching and, uh, you know, leave a, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't and leave a like if you really enjoyed this video. See you next time.